nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Hey everyone, I'm the Saxophone Oracle. This week we're talking about the 10 jazz standards that every improvising musician should know and be able to play well. When it comes to choosing repertoire that we play, well, there's any number of reasons why we might choose a particular song or not, right? Hopefully we might learn a song because, well, we like it. Uh, we might learn a song because we're in a band and that's what the other group members want to play or the band director wants you to play. You might learn a song because you're paid to. At least, you know, in the professional world, a lot of us play music that we wouldn't otherwise play because, well, it's our job. You might learn a song because it's something other people want to hear or it's requested um, like in my case, I know the music from Frozen, not because I particularly care for it or have any need to know it, other than the fact my daughter really likes it. So it's a family activity we can do. I can play the piano, we can sing together, hopefully spark some interest in her about music, or at the very least teach her that music isn't something that just comes out of a speaker or a screen, right? We also learn music for educational reasons. Now, whether we like the song or not, it may be very useful for us to know it. There are certain songs that are just a gold mine of information that can be beneficial to us on any number of levels. And if we learn to master these songs and play them well, not only will it help us become better musicians, but it'll give us a whole bunch of tools that we can take and then apply to various other musical situations. And that's what I want to talk about today. I put together a list of 10 songs that if you learn to play them well, I am confident it will prepare you for almost any musical situation, almost any song that may come your way. I've made many videos along these lines. I did one about the jazz standard we should be learning in all 12 keys. I did one about bird blues in 12 keys. I did one about the importance of learning to improvise over the dominant cycle. And one of my earliest, earliest videos was called The Five Ways to One. Because as improvising musicians, I think one of our main jobs is to be able to recognize, understand, and know how to deal with harmony. And I know I probably sound like a broken record, but in tonal music, there's only a finite number of places where the harmony can take us. So if we can learn to comfortably negotiate certain chord sequences that are very common, it sets us up for success in almost any kind of music and any style of music. And so I've chosen these 10 songs based mostly on their harmonic content. So we're going to go through the list and I'm going to explain why I think each of them is essential. Number one, the blues. And when I say the blues, this means all kinds of blues. Three chord blues, jazz blues, minor blues, and of course, bird blues with all those chord changes. This is a no-brainer. The blues is one of the most common chord progressions, if not the most common song form in all of music. So whether you're talking about Robert Johnson, Muddy Waters, Thelonious Monk, Duke Ellington, Charlie Parker, uh, Kiss by Prince, Can't Buy Me Love by Beatles, almost every Elvis Presley song, Mustang Sally, whatever it is, these are all the blues, and we have to know how to play them. Number two, George Gershwin's I Got Rhythm. Rhythm changes, okay? This is one of the most popular song forms in jazz music. It's an A-A-B-A -A -A form, which is also very common, but the harmony is what we call the turnaround. So it's one, six, two, five, one, six, two, five, goes to the four chord, goes back to one. And in the bridge, we have a cycle of dominant chords, which is another very common chord sequence. It's essential to know how to play and be comfortable playing over rhythm changes. Number three, it Could Happen To You. This is a Jimmy Van Heusen jazz standard, and this song is a complete gold mine of useful harmonic information. I talk about this song as the jazz standard that we should all be learning to play in 12 keys. Because it's got so much in it, we have the 2-5-1 chord progression, we have 3-6-2-5, we have the four minor seven going to flat dominant seven resolving to one. We have sharp four minor seven flat five, seven dominant resolving to one. We go to the four chord, we go to the relative minor, we do almost anything you might come across in tonal music. This song is absolutely essential and I highly suggest this one to be learned in all 12 keys. The fourth song on the list is a song, it's a bebop standard by Dizzy Gillespie called Woody In You. And the reason I've chosen this song is because it features prominently the minor 2-5 chord progression. So we have 
to minor seven flat five going to five dominant. And it's important that we all learn and are comfortable playing over this. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, I have an entire video about minor seven flat five chords that I encourage you to check out. And then this is the perfect tune to practice what you learn there. Okay, this starts on sharp four minor seven flat five, goes to five seven dominant. Then it goes to three minor seven flat five, six, two minor seven flat five, five, and then resolves to one. And in this case, it resolves to one major which is something else that's very common. It's known as mode mixture. It's when we borrow from the minor tonality and resolve and apply it to the major tonality. This is an incredibly useful song. That kind of thing is very popular in Cole Porter's music all over jazz. Number five on the list, Indiana. Back home again in Indiana. This is what Donnelly is based on. This is just a fantastic tune that everyone should learn. It goes to all the common places. One, six, it hangs out on the two chord. Two, five, one, we go to the four chord, four minor back to one. In the second half, instead of going to the four chord, it goes to the relative minor. Again, super common. This is a great song that everyone should be learning. Number six is Cherokee, Ray Noble's tune, Cherokee. Again, it's an AABA tune, but the sections are much longer than a typical AABA. The A sections of this song go to all the typical places, right? We go 2-5 to the 4 chord, 4 minor back to 1, we hang out on 2 dominant. In the first ending, we tonicize the key of 2 minor for a bit, so that's kind of cool. But the real gold of this song is the bridge. We do a string of 2 fives that descend by tone through a whole number of keys. So it's typically played in the key of B-flat major. In the bridge, we go instantly 2-5 to the key of B flat two, and then we do two five, a tone down, two five, a tone down. We go through about five key centers before we bring it back to B flat and the last A. It's a really useful song. It's a great vehicle to practice any two five one licks you might have. And it tends to be played really fast, this song, but you don't have to. What's important is that you're able to get through this chord progression comfortably. Number seven is a standard by the great saxophonist Benny Golson. It's called Stablemates, and specifically I like the chord changes on the classic Miles Davis version. So in this, it starts out with a series of two fives that descend by semitone. Again, a very common chord sequence. When it gets to one, well then we go to the four chord, and then we work our way back to one, starting on sharp four, going seven dominant, three, six, two, five. Another interesting thing about this tune is the form. It goes A, B, A. So a lot of beginner intermediate players have trouble keeping their place in this type of form. So it's a good workout for that. And the bridge is an excellent workout on dominant chords as well, specifically the tritone substitution as it goes down by semitone all the way back to the top. Number eight, there'll never be another you. Again, simply because it goes to all the common places. It's a very common song. It starts in one. It goes immediately two five to the relative minor. We go to the four chord from four minor back to one. We hang out in two dominant. It's got all the bare essentials you need to know. It also finishes with a really common turnaround. One, four, three, six, two, five. Another you. Number nine, Stella by Starlight. This is a quintessential jazz standard and it's a really interesting tune. I know a lot of people play it to death, but it's, there's a reason for it. Okay, it's a 32 bar song, but the form isn't AABA. It's kind of like A, B, C, D. It's almost like each eight bar segment is unique to itself. It's also interesting because it's typically played in B flat major, but we don't actually see B flat major until the ninth bar. It starts out hinting at B flat diminished and then we work our way to the one chord in the ninth bar. We go to the four chord, we even work to the key of five and we get there in a backdoor sort of way. We use four minor flat seven, flat seven dominant of the five chord to get there. The bridge is interesting. It's a nice example of using mode mixture, which we talked about before. And then finally, the last eight bars is another string of minor seven, uh, minor two fives. So minor seven flat five, starting on sharp four, going to seven, three, six, two, five. Again, resolving to one major mode mixture. It's one heck of a workout, this tune, to play well. The tenth and final song is a Thelonious Monk composition that I chose called Well You Needn't. And the reason I chose this is because it's a really good dominant seventh chord workout and it illustrates really well how to play over the tritone substitution. We start in one and we go to flat two, one, flat two, one, flat two in the A section. So instead of one to five, we go to the tritone sub, which is flat two dominant. 
and then in the bridge that's really sneaky kind of it goes up and down dominant chords by semitone if you can learn to play this tune very well you're doing yourself a big service this list is by no means complete and it was really hard to narrow it down to just 10 songs and believe me i could have substituted in or put in any number of other songs but I am really confident in this list. If you go and learn to play these 10 songs at a reasonable level, you're pretty much prepared for anything that might come your way, whether you're talking Coltrane changes, Joe Henderson changes, anything bebop, any kind of popular music, or even more complex, advanced modern harmonies. And this all falls in line with what I'm always saying about practice. We always want to kill as many birds as we can with one stone. We need to maximize our practice. So hopefully you'll like some of these songs that I'm suggesting. But at the very least, if you take my advice and, and learn these songs, you are maximizing your practice time and you're certainly setting yourself up for long-term success. I'm the Saxophone Oracle. Thank you so much for continuing to watch. I'd love to hear from you. I'd like to know what you think about this list. If you have any suggestions, reach out in the comments, reach out by email. If you haven't already done so, please consider subscribing. At the very least, give me a thumbs up share with your friends, little things like that is what helps this channel grow and makes it easier for others to find the content that I'm making. I wish you a great week. Happy practicing. See you next Tuesday. Bye.